Um, but lastly, the big one this week, I didn't talk about it last week because it, it did launch on May 5th. So that was before the show. Uh, China successfully launched their new Long March 5B rocket, which is their, this will, this is kind of comparable to like an Ariane 5 or a Falcon 9. It's, it kind of, well, it actually, as far as configuration is similar to like the Energia where it's, um, a core hydrogen stage with strap on liquid fuel boosters. And this thing took off. It, it has about a 25 ton payload capacity. So again, very similar to a Falcon 9. And they launched with their new uh, crew capsule, which frankly looks a lot like a dragon capsule. And they don't really, I cannot find a name for this. So if you know the name for this thing, please let me know. But it used to be the, the Shenzhou, but people are thinking it might be still Shenzhou. They just are not renaming it, but yeah. So, so the it launched Shenzhou capsule out to, I think 8,000 kilometers uh, at its highest point and came back in for a nice spicy re-entry. But this is, so this is the Long March 5. Like I said, it's, it's not very tall, 57 meters tall. That's quite a bit shorter than a Falcon 9. Its diameter is 5 meters, which is pretty wide. It has a 5 meter fairing up top. Uh, yeah, payload to Leo is 25,000 kilograms, or so 25 metric tons. Yeah, it's um, pretty cool, though. And then the, the interesting thing about it, is okay so here oh yeah so this thing's landing on land kind of like their shenzhou currently does and like soyuz currently does but what's interesting is instead of using retro fire rockets like the soyuz capsule does it is landing on airbags similar to boeing's uh mm. starliner lands on airbags too but it's, looks like it R2 sounds D2 like you had a bad day yeah <laughs> it almost looks like darth vader's helmet yeah it looks like r2d2 made a helmet of darth vader <laughs> That thing is beat all the hell. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? But it, it came back. This is it was a very successful test, which is exciting because China is working on trying to get to the moon, and I believe this space capsule will be what they use to to actually go to the moon. So um, that's really good news. But the interesting part of all this is that core stage. You know, the the Long March has this big giant core stage. Well. Um, that was uncontrolled after they put it, and this basically gets into orbit. This huge stage, it's over 20 tons, <laughs> is uh, after it deploys the payload, it's just kind of floating there in space, uncontrolled. And it crashed down. It at one point flew basically over my house almost and re entered and crashed down just east of New York City, only like a couple hundred kilometers away from like the coast of the United States. I can't believe they're not doing a controlled re-entry of a 20-ton hunk of space debris. Couple hundred kilometers. Speak to me in miles. Sorry. I mean, it's it's probably like two or 300. I don't know how far that is. That might be 1,000 miles or something uh, east of New York. I can't really tell on this map. But uh, so like maybe, sorry, probably a couple, probably a couple uh a couple thousand kilometers away from New York, but still it's, oh, it's within the vicinity and yeah, I don't know. It just seems insane to me that they just let it just ballistically reenter. Is there no... not some kind of agreement, you know, treaty global accord. Don't drop <laughs> rockets on me, bro. You know, something. I thought so. <laughs> I thought it was just generally a good idea to not do that. Um, you know, we normally do, uh, very planned, like SLS, for instance, will do a similar thing where its center core will re-enter immediately on the next orbit uh, because it does pretty much go orbital. The, the center core of SLS, that that big giant orange tank, huge, huge orange tank, uh, pretty much gets itself into orbit. So they intentionally do this orbit where on the next time around it, it will re-enter. So they know exactly where it's going to re-enter. They intentionally let it burn up Um in the Indian Ocean, just kind of in the middle of nowhere, there's an exclusion zone, so there's no boats or planes flying in there. And uh, this is not doing that. And maybe they're going to get some flack for it if they don't start at least making their orbit in a similar manner where um, the spacecraft does a circularization. So it doesn't do a ballistic reentry, but the core stage does a more controlled reentry. But yeah, kind of <laughs> crazy, right? That's nuts. They kind of just do what they want to do feels like they kind of do and now that they're could be affecting other places i think it's kind of 
because they kind of just used to drop boosters on their own. They still sometimes do on their own villages. Um, <laughs> that's one thing. But then when you start dropping boosters on New York City, it mm-hmm. might be another thing. That's an act of war right there. Yeah, I mean, we dropped, we did drop a, a booster on on a cow in Cuba once, and it was not a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you know the chances of that happening are probably so incredibly small, right? Because oh. Cuba itself is not like a giant place. <laughs> like, how many well, cows hitting, are there? <laughs> even hitting New York City, like is infandescent like it's, t- it's pretty in small the grand scheme of things it's tiny it's a tiny tiny yeah. little dot just zoom out on google maps sometime and just imagine like hitting it with a dart right you know it's not a big place really i mean yes mm-hmm. it's densely populated but um it's just kind of this little you know so imagine even trying to hit that from space it'd be pretty yeah pretty impressive imagine being on a ship out in the middle of the ocean <laughs> and that thing just happens to land on you oh yeah the odds of that Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.